On to the Maldives now. Looks like President Mohamed Moizu's anti-India rhetoric is backfiring. This time on tourism. You may remember the boycott Maldives trend. Moizu's ministers insulted India and Prime Minister Modi. So many Indians said, we won't visit the Maldives. And guess what? They're actually doing it. So Maldivian tourism agencies are worried. One of them held talks with India's High Commissioner in Mali. It's called Matato, Maldives Association of Travel Agents and Tour Operators. After the meeting, they announced a plan. A plan to bring back Indian tourists. The first step is holding roadshows. Key Indian cities will be selected. Then roadshows will be held to promote Maldivian tourism. The second step is using social media. Travel influencers are a big deal nowadays, so maybe the plan is to get them on board. But why the desperation? Because the boycott trend is working. Let's look at the numbers. Last year, almost 1.7 million tourists visited the Maldives. Indians were number one on this list. More than 200,000 of them visited the island, more than 200,000 Indians. But this year, it has changed. India has fallen to number six. More than 660,000 people have visited the Maldives. Only 37,000 of them were Indians. And who's leading the list? China, with 70,000 tourists. So Indians are turning away from the Maldives, and this is bad news for them. India is much closer than China or Russia or Europe. The flights are cheaper and the culture is similar. So Indians should be a reliable source of tourism for the Maldives. Their economy depends on it. Tourism makes up almost 30%, 30% of the Maldivian GDP, also 60% of their foreign earnings. So if tourism falls, the Maldives suffers, which is why travel agents are worried. The question is, can a roadshow fix all of this? Well, India did not start the diplomatic face-off. President Moizu did. Yet New Delhi has not abandoned the Maldives. Last week, India made a gesture of faith. It increased export quotas on essential goods. Basically, India promised to send more goods to the Maldives. A 5% increase in eggs, onion, sugar, rice and wheat flour. That's a 25% rise in river sand. And this last one is very important. River sand. Because no sand, no infrastructure, no bridges, no buildings, no roads. The Maldivian foreign minister also thanked India for this gesture. Another outreach came from Prime Minister Modi. He greeted President Muizu on Eid. He also highlighted the cultural and civilizational ties. So India is doing everything it can. The rest is up to Muizu. In January, he called India a bully. He also asked Indian soldiers to leave the country. Now Muizu says it's all about sovereignty. Yet the same Muizu has signed new military deals with China. But he forgot a basic rule of geopolitics. You see, you can change your allies, you can change your rivals, but you cannot change your neighbors. Geography is the only constant in geopolitics. And we are seeing evidence of that now. First in the rising export quotas, then in the tourism sector. Tourism is a major job provider in the Maldives. It employs more than 50,000 people, which is almost 10% of their population. And Muizu knows all of this. Recently, he appeared to tone down his rhetoric. He called India his closest ally. But words alone will not be enough. He will have to back them up with actions. And the people of Maldives will soon have a chance to judge him. Because parliamentary elections are slated for the 21st of this month, 21st April, Muizu is looking to secure a majority in parliament. Chances are his India policy will be on the ballot. If he wins big, expect him to lean more on India out. If not, there could be a rethink.